A hundred long years have passed, since the tragic event, of Jallianwala Bagh. Hi, I am Kush, and in today's episode, I will be telling you, about the Jallianwala Bagh, massacre. <laughs> It all started with the introduction of the Royal Act of 1919, by the Imperial Legislative Council, in Delhi, on March 18. It gave the government, enormous powers to repress political activities, and allowed detention and imprisonment of any person, suspected of involving in revolutionary activities, for up to two years, without a trial. It was passed on the recommendations of the Rollat Committee, and was named after its president, an English judge, Sir Sidney Rollat. Despite the united opposition, of the Indian members of the committee, the accused were denied, the right to know the accusers, and the evidence is used, and were arrested, without a warrant. The purpose of the act, was to curb the growing nationalist upsurge in India, on 16th of April 1919, a strike was organized, where Indians would suspend all business. Rallies were organized in various cities, workers went on strike in railway workshops, and shops were closed down. Martial law was imposed, and General Dyer took command. On 13th of April 1919, the infamous Jallianwala Bagh massacre took place at 9 a.m. Colonel Regent Dyer, the acting commander for Amritsar, proceeded through the city with several officials, announcing the implementation of a pass system, to enter, or leave Mritsar, and a ban on, all processions, and public meetings, of four or more persons. Actually, the authorities were becoming concerned, by the display of Hindu-Muslim unity. The European population in Punjab, feared that the locals, would overthrow British rule. At 12.40 pm, Dyer was informed of the planned meeting in the Jallianwala Bagh, through the local CID. So, he returned to his base at around 1.30 pm, to decide how to handle it. By the mid-afternoon, thousands of Sikhs, Muslims, and Hindus had gathered, in the Jallianwala Bagh. Many, who were present, had earlier worshipped at the Golden Temple, and were passing through the Bagh. On their way home, some came to protest, against the government's new repressive measures and others had come, to attend the annual Baisakhi fair. The city police, closed the fair at 2 p.m. that afternoon, resulting in a large number of people, drifting into the Bagh. It was estimated, that about 20,000 to 25,000 people, had gathered in the Bagh. By the time of the meeting, Dyer sent an airplane, to overfly the Bagh, and estimate the size of the crowd. By this time, Dyer was well aware of the meeting, but took no action to prevent it, or send police, to peacefully disperse the crowd. After an hour, Dyer arrived at the Bagh, with a group of British Indian Army, blocked the exit points, and without warning the crowd to disperse, open fired on the crowd. Many people died in the stampedes, at the gates, or by jumping into the well, on the compound to escape the shooting. The wounded could not be moved from where they had fallen, as a curfew was declared, and many more died during the night. The number of deaths, caused by the shooting, is disputed. The official figure given by the British inquiry, into the massacre is 379, while the casualty number quoted by the Congress, was more than 1,500, with approximately 1,000 being killed. The British government tried to suppress information of the massacre, in India and Britain. But the news spread in India, and a widespread protest did follow. While the details of the massacre did not become known in Britain, until December, Dyer's object, as he declared later, was to produce a moral effect, to create in the minds of people a feeling of terror and awe. As an act of protest, Robendranath Tagore, renounced his knighthood, in the repudiation letter to the Viceroy, Lord Chelmsford, he wrote, The time has come, when badges of honor, make our shame glaring, in the incongruous context of humiliation, and I for my part, wish to stand, shorn, 
of all special distinctions, by the side of those, of my countrymen, who, for their so-called insignificance, are liable to suffer degradation, not fit for human beings. In late 1919, a Congress session was held in Namritsar, to acquire the land for a memorial, while the British government had wanted, to turn the ground into a cloth market, to erase all evidences of the massacre. Finally, a trust was founded in 1920, to build the memorial, with Sash Teacher and Mukherjee, as the secretary. The trust went door to door, for collecting the money, and bought the land in an open auction. A memorial designed by American architect Benjamin Polk, was built on the site, and inaugurated by the President of India, Rajendra Prasad, on 13th of April 1961. Although, Queen Elizabeth II, had not made any comments, on the incident during her state visits, in 1961 and, 1983, she spoke about the events, at a state banquet, in India on 13th of October 1997. It is no secret that there have been some difficult episodes in our past, Jallianwala which I shall visit tomorrow is a distressing example. But history cannot be rewritten, however much we might sometimes wish otherwise. It has its moments of sadness, as well as gladness. We must learn from the sadness and build on the gladness. Some criticized it, for being less than an apology. But the then Prime Minister of India, Indayakuma, Gujral, defended the Queen, saying that the Queen herself had not even been born, at the time of the events and should not be required to apologize. Although, many demands for an apology were made in different times, but an official apology is not yet received by India. Whatever might have been, the real cause, of the massacre, but it was really one of the most, inhumane actions of the British colonialism, in India. And, please share this video to more and more people to make them aware of one of the most tragic episodes of British colonialism. Thanks.